this area I was living in uh, was near the University of Pennsylvania. So a lot of the black students couldn't get their hair cut at the regular barbers because they wouldn't cut African-American hair. So we led a campaign around that. And, um, and you know, today every barbershop has to teach barbers how to cut all kinds of hair. But then they didn't, you know. There were no such thing as integrated uh, barber schools or beauty. My mother was a beautician, and there were no white beauticians learning how to, to style and straighten and all that stuff with black black women's hair. So this was a, a, a real uh, a problem for these students that couldn't get a haircut. So, you know, we raised a lot of hell about that. And uh, they uh, some of the barbershops relented, and the university had to make a statement about that. Uh, we, did, we would organize uh, interracial dances in the community, and uh, it became one of our, you know, most attractive features in a lot of ways. Young, young people come around because they could have, they could dance and have a good time with all kinds of kids of all races and nationalities. Not the same. But you turn on television, they had dance shows, and uh, they were not integrated. And so, bandstand was in West Philadelphia area, right near me. I grew up in West Philadelphia, living not far from where they used to film Bandstand. So our, our little committee decided we were gonna go and integrate Bandstand. And um, so we found uh, the, the, the age level was a little younger than I was. I was already near 20. But we found some young people in the organization who were willing to do it, and we sent three couples on the show. And um, they got online, you get online before you get on to get into the show, and all the regulars, they had regulars. They uh, always got in first, they didn't even have to bother to get online. And, but if you, but you got online and then they would take so many in. And they were online early enough that they had to be taken in. Now there's a little, little angle to the story, you know, there was, there were some people who did go on uh, bandstand uh, who were African American. But some of them, they weren't visibly African American. Uh, and nobody complained. But what would happen if a couple came on, and uh, and then what would happen if there was interracial dancing, which we didn't we, we didn't push at first. We wanted to just get on the show and show we could do it. So while waiting online, <clears throat> the guy who was managing the line came out and he told the kids, uh, uh, you know, you want to come on the show, huh? Yeah, want to come on the show. He says, well, look, uh, just a minute, wait a minute. So they're waiting here, and I'm saying, no, you can't. And then in, out walks Dick Clark. <laughs> and, and, and Dick Clark said, welcome. I'm glad, we're glad you're here. Please, please come in and have a good time. Now, what's the lesson? The lesson is that if you didn't test it, you wouldn't know that that was the case. Because you look on television, there were none of us there. And we wanted to make the point that if we're going to fight against racism and discrimination, it ought to be in social relationships as well as schools and, you know, and well as uh, jobs and all the other things. When I really solidified me in the organization, I really, uh, really thought, well, we can really do stuff.